Assalamualaikum and hi students. Alright, so in this video, we are going to discuss a tutorial question for chapter 2 and then face-to-face -face and face-to-face -face for first hour. Alright, so please refer to the question. Alright, the first question uh, in non-face-to-face -face, uh, materials, right? So you have this question. Okay, you have this question. The standard enthalpy of formation of nitric oxide gas NO is positive 90.7 kilojoule per mole. Alright, so this is the important information where given to you the standard enthalpy of formation of nitric oxide and this is the values. Alright, okay. First question, you are going to define. Okay? The question asks you to define the standard enthalpy of formation. So you have to give the correct definition uh, for standard enthalpy of formation. So as it is. So this is the correct uh, definition for standard enthalpy of formation. Mesti lengkap seperti ini. Tidak ada jawapan lain. Alright. Okay. Next, we have settled with question A. Next, we will continue with B. Write the thermochemical equation that shows the formation of nitrogen or nitric oxide. So you have to write the thermochemical equation. So thermochemical equation is a chemical reaction that uh, shows the enthalpy change, whether it is uh, heat release or heat absorb for the chemical reaction. So in this question, you have to show the thermochemical equation uh, which is related to formation of nitric oxide. Okay, so macam mana kita nak buat? So first of all, you must understand the definition of standard enthalpy of formation. So that's why dalam soalan pertama ni tadi, soalan A, dia tanya the definition. So you can see here, the definition of standard enthalpy of formation is heat change. Okay, so the when heat change, maksudnya delta H, it could be positive or negative. Depends to the uh, formation of this, uh, the compound. Okay, heat change when one mole of a compound is formed from its element in their most stable states. And of course, as standard condition. Tadi, kalau kat sini, kita nampak ada perkataan one mole, okay, compound. So, siapakah compound yang kita nak tunjukkan dia punya formation tu? So, in this case, we are going to show the formation of one mole of nitric oxide from its element. From its element yang paling stabil in their most stable state pada 1 atm and 25 degree celsius so uh, please check your answer alright so suppose that okay uh, the formation eh the thermochemical equation for nitric uh, nitric oxide adalah uh, saya start dulu dengan kita nak form apa we are going to form nitric oxide gas no and the phase is gas mesti ada NO dan juga fasa je lah. Okay, sekarang ni kita nak tunjuk formation of one mole NO. Kenapa one mole? Sebab kita bercakap pasal uh, standard enthalpy of formation. Diberikan dalam data ni adalah standard enthalpy of formation. Jadi standard enthalpy of formation bagi NO, you nampak kat sini ada perkataan one mole kan. Ha, jadi one mole of nitric oxide tu mesti one mole lah. Okay, so nitric oxide is formed from its element. Element dia yang paling stabil adalah nitrogen gas. Okay, nitrogen gas. So, nitrogen exists in a molecule, dalam bentuk molecule. And oxygen gas. Oxygen gas. Tapi, disebabkan kita nak letakkan, kita nak relate, uh, nak tally dengan definition, nitric oxide mesti satu mol. Jadinya, untuk equation ini, you have to put half here and half here. And don't forget, you must write the enthalpy change delta H at the end of the equation which is equal to positive 90.7 kilojoule per mole. So, siapa tak letak delta H di hujung equation ini salah. Kalau equationnya salah pun salah dan tak ada unit, uh, tak ada sign. Positive ni masih letak eh. Uh, positive sign ni masih letak and then the unit kilojoule per mole pun masih letak. Okay. Alright. Okay, so now let's move to question C. So, kita dah settle A and B. Now, move to question C. Alright. Okay. By referring to 1A, explain why the standard enthalpy of elements is zero. So, saya dah terangkan dalam kuliah. Kenapa standard enthalpy of any elements? For example, apakah elements kat sini? Nitrogen, gas. 
Okay, oxygen gas. So, kenapa the value of standard enthalpy of formation, for example, for nitrogen gas, okay, adalah zero. Ha, kalau untuk oxygen gas pun, kenapa dia adalah zero? Ha, okay, ha, so saya dah terangkan dalam kuliah because, okay, uh, there is no formation reaction needed when the element is already in its standard state. Uh, dia dah memang dalam keadaan yang paling stabil. Jadi, tidak ada reaction yang diperlukan. So, that's why the standard enthalpy of formation itu adalah zero. Okay. So, A settle, B settle, C settle. And now, we are going to uh, continue with question D. Sketch the energy profile diagram for the above reaction. So, kalau kita lihat kepada tindak balas ni tadi. Maksudnya, kita boleh tengok kepada thermochemical equation in question B. Okay, saya petah balik. Kita tengok B. Okay, it shows that the reaction, the reaction is endothermic reaction. Okay, endothermic reaction. So, jadi kalau dia endothermic reaction, bila kita nak uh, lukiskan energy profile diagram, mesti betul. Jadi, uh, you kena lukis macam ni lah. Eh? Uh, dia adalah gambar raja energy profile tu. Maksudnya, you kena tengok uh, why exists must be labeled with energy or enthalpy with its unit. Okay, kilojoule. Okay, and for X axis, label as progress of reaction. Okay, di bahagian, uh, maksudnya dari segi shape of energy profile, mesti betul. Uh, bukit tu menaik. The enthalpy of reactors is lower compared to enthalpy of product. Okay, uh, jadi shape of the energy profile mesti betul. And then, pastikan you salin balik daripada equation uh, di sebelah reaction, uh, mesti balance dan juga ada phase dia. Produk dia mesti balance dan mesti one mole of uh, nitric oxide. Label the EA. Okay, tunjukkan dengan arrow. And label the standard enthalpy of formation. You tengok kat sini, mesti di label sebagai delta H node F. Okay, positive 90.7 kilojoule per mole. So, mesti ada node tu sebab kita uh, dah mention kat situ. Standard enthalpy of formation. Eh, dalam soalan yang disebut. Standard enthalpy of formation. Okay, uh, saya terlupa kat sini tadi ni dalam soalan B, you kena letak delta H note F. Ah, Kenapa ada note ni? Sebab uh, standard enthalpy of formation ada perkataan standard. Okay, sorry tadi saya terlupa nak letak. Okay, so kita dah settle untuk kesemua soalan dan face to face number one. Alright, so settle. So now let's continue with question two. Alright, so for question number two, okay, the question asks you to name the enthalpy change for the following reactions. So, diberikan kepada awak, apa dia kat sini? Semua ni adalah thermochemical equation. So, ini semua adalah thermochemical equation. Jadi, tugas pelajar, dia mesti faham. Dia mesti faham ni, thermochemical equation ni merujuk kepada enthalpy yang mana satu? Enthalpy of neutralization, enthalpy Uh, enthalpy of solution ataupun enthalpy of formation uh, yang enam definition yang kita belajar tu. Uh, jadi untuk menjawab soalan ini di peringkat awal ni you kena fahamkan betul-betul lah. You kena baca equation tu dan tengok apa dia. Okay. So kita lihat daripada uh, kita lihat dulu yang pertama. So untuk memudahkan ni uh, saya buat dalam bentuk ni lah uh, supaya pelajar senang nak tengok. Jawapan ni yang warna kuning tu. So for the first question you tengok kat sini we have lithium chloride solid. Okay. Lithium chloride solid. So this is the substance and then dia bertukar. It is converted to lithium ion aqueous and chloride ion aqueous. And this is the enthalpy given. Okay. It is exothermic reaction. Jadi kalau you tengok, ini adalah uh, delta H ini adalah enthalpy of solutions of lithium chloride. Kenapa? Sebab kalau kita tengok kat sini, one mole of lithium chloride dissolve in solvent okay, to form an infinite dilute solution. Bila dia form infinite dilute solution, dia akan bertukar menjadi aqueous ion. Okay, ha, dan kalau kita tengok kat sini tindak balas ini adalah exothermic Walaupun dalam definition, definition ni saya letak kat sini supaya senang nak rujuk kan Okay, heat change maksudnya tindak balas ini proses nak hasilkan larutan itu boleh jadi uh, Delta H nya boleh jadi positif uh, atau negatif But in this case, dia beri contoh yang uh, exothermic reaction Okay Next, for question number two, okay, kalau you tengok ke sini, we have one mole of nitrogen gas, okay. 
which is formed from its element, a pardon, nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. And this is an endothermic reaction where the delta H is positive 33.85 kJ per mole. So, per mole ini merujuk kepada formation of one mole of nitrogen dioxide. So, the answer for this question is enthalpy of formation of siapa? Nitrogen dioxide. Uh, so, you may refer to the definition of the uh, enthalpy of formation. So, saya letakkan kat sini lah dia punya definition. So, boleh rujuk eh. Okay, for number 3. Okay, if you refer here, apakah you nampak conversion yang berlaku pada equation itu? We have calcium ion in gaseous state bertukar menjadi calcium ion in aqueous phase. Ha, jadi, ini adalah proses hydration. Proses hydration. So, what happen? Calcium, uh, apa ni? Calcium gaseous ion is hydrated uh, by water molecule. So, dia bertukar menjadi one mole of calcium gaseous ion. Sorry, one mole of calcium ion dalam keadaan aqueous. Uh, jadi, apakah nama uh, enthalpy ini? Enthalpy of hydration. Okay, where enthalpy of hydration is heat release when one mole of gaseous ion is hydrated in aqueous solution. Uh, jadi, one mole of gaseous ion itu, okay, we refer to calcium 2 plus gas kat sini. Alright, okay, for number uh, 4, alright, okay, kalau you tengok kat sini, kita ada apa? Kita ada one mole of gaseous atom, iaitu sodium gaseous atom form daripada elemennya yang paling stabil. Elemennya yang paling stabil apa? Sodium dalam keadaan solid. Ha, sebab sodium ni memang at 25 degree Celsius uh, and 180 m, dia memang wujud dalam bentuk solid metal. Ha, jadi, apabila dia menghasilkan satu mol gaseous ion, proses ini kita namakan atomization. Atomization. Jadi, atomization adalah satu proses that required heat. Ha, so, dia adalah enthalpy of atomization where heat is absorbed. Okay, when one mole of gaseous atom is formed from its element. Uh, so, that's why you nampak kat sini delta H dia positif dan one mole itu merujuk kepada sodium gaseous atom ini. Alright, yang saya bulatkan tu. Okay, so kita dah settle empat uh, enthalpies uh, daripada soalan ini. Jadi, kita sambung. Alright, next, number five. Okay, uh, if you refer here, I have one mole of barium chloride solid which is formed from its element. Barium chloride, dia terhasil daripada tindak balas barium metal, which is in uh, solid state, and chlorine gaseous molecule. Ah, uh, Jadi, ini adalah dia punya elemen yang paling stabil. Elemen yang paling stabil bagi barium adalah barium solid. Elemen yang paling stabil bagi chlorine adalah chlorine gaseous atom. So, when one mole of barium chloride is formed from its element in the most stable state, the enthalpy change here, iaitu yang negative value ini, kita panggil dia apa? Enthalpy of formation of barium chloride. Okay. Alright. Okay, next. Kalau you tengok pada soalan number 6, apa yang berlaku, you can see here one mole of fluorine gaseous atom is formed from its element. Jadi, fluorine memang wujud uh, dalam keadaan paling stabil. In the most stable state, fluorine tu memang wujud sebagai fluorine molecule gas. Tapi, bila dia nak form satu mole fluorine gaseous atom ini, that's why kita letak setengah kat sini sebab kita nak balance kan equation. And this process is endothermic. Okay, jadi apakah nama proses ini? Atomization. Jadi maksudnya uh, nama enthalpy ini adalah enthalpy of atomization of fluorine. Uh, yang warna kuning tu yang penting. Yang saya highlight warna kuning tu yang penting. Okey, jadi kalau kita refer kepada definition memang you nampak kat sini. Enthalpy of atomization adalah heat change when one mole of a compound. Uh, jadi siapakah compound kita? Okey. Uh, okay, sorry. One mole of gaseous atom. Eh? Ah, ini tersalah ni. Ah, ini tersalah. Ah, kita refer kepada enthalpy of atomization. So, you refer kepada enthalpy of atomization punya definition. Ah, ini saya tersalah copy sebenarnya. Okay, heat uh, absorb when one mole of gaseous atom is formed from its element. Okay, ah, itu adalah enthalpy of atomization. Ah, so, ni refer kepada enthalpy of atomization punya definition ya kelas. Okay, alright. Jadi, untuk number 6, okay, kalau you lihat kat sini, we have a substance here, one mole of C2H6. 
Okay, it is burned in oxygen ataupun combusted in oxygen dan product form dia carbon dioxide and water. Tapi kalau you tengok ke sini, yang satu molnya siapa? Per mol because we have per mol here. So per mol itu merujuk kepada You tengok reaction apa? Kalau dia react dengan oksigen, confirm dia adalah combustion. Jadi ini adalah combustion of one mole C2H6 ataupun etin lah. Eh? Ha, jadi this uh, the enthalpy here is enthalpy of combustion. Okay, enthalpy of combustion where the definition is heat release. Okay, heat release when one mole of a substance completely combusted in oxygen gas. So substance kat sini merujuk kepada Etin. Ah, okay, substan kat sini merujuk kepada C2H6. Alright. Okay, and the last atomo chemical equation given to you. You can see here, this is a reaction between nitric acid and sodium hydroxide, which is a base. So, when acid react with base, it will form water. It will form water. Jadi, kalau you tengok pada equation ini, apabila satu mol water form, dia release sebanyak negatif 57.3 kilojoule uh, per mol energy. So, this is enthalpy of neutralization. Uh, jadi, kalau kita rujuk kepada dia punya definition, dia adalah heat release. Okay, heat release when one mole of water is formed when an acid react with base. Uh, jadi, ini antara uh, latihan yang boleh digunakan untuk pelajar untuk identify, kena faham uh, Definition dan thermochemical equation. Maksudnya pelajar kena tahu baca thermochemical equation. Alright, if you have any question or problems, nanti you boleh PM saya lah tanya. Eh. Okay, jadi untuk uh, MD 13 dan 14, maksudnya saya akan cover uh, apa ni tutorial first hour ni dalam video ini. So, saya tak akan bincang lagi dalam kelas. But if you have any question, you boleh tanya dalam soal, uh, dalam kelas lah. Uh, bila kita bertemu nanti. Eh. Okay, next. Alright, so now let's move to face-to-face uh, -face question. Okay, yang ni dah mula masuk kepada calculation and this question cover 2.2 uh, actually. Uh, calorie metric. Okay. A 446 gram of water is heated from 8.50 degree Celsius to 74.60 degree Celsius. Calculate the amount of heat absorbed in kilojoules by water. Uh, so, you kena fahamkan betul-betul kalau you lihat kat sini, you ada apa? A sample of water. You ada a sample of water. Berapa banyak? 446 gram of water. So, what happened to the water? Uh, it is heated. It was heated. Dia telah dipanaskan. So, initially, the temperature was 8.50 degrees Celsius. So, when the water is heated, so the temperature increased to 74.60 degrees Celsius. Okay, so you nampak kat sini, you can find the change in temperature. You boleh cari delta T kat situ. Okay. Right. Jadi, apa itu 446 gram ni? 446 gram ini adalah represent the mass of water. Okay, uh, mass of water. So, saya conteng kat sini lah. Mass of water. Okay, so now the question asks you to calculate the amount of heat absorbed by the water. Okay, jadi apabila air itu tadi, initially at 8.50 degree Celsius yang uh, sejuk kan. So, bila dia dipanaskan, what happen? Dia akan absorb heat. So, the heat absorb tu yang kita nak kira. Berapa banyak, how much of the heat absorb by the water? Maksudnya, we are going to calculate the heat absorb by water. Okay, heat absorb by water. Okay, apa simbol heat absorbed by water? It is Q. Uh, ataupun Q water. So, how we are going to heat, uh, to calculate heat absorbed by water? It is equal to, apa kita ada? We have mass of water. Okay, kita ada delta T. And please bear in mind that uh, to increase the temperature of uh, 1 gram of water by 1 degree Celsius, kita ada satu perkara yang penting iaitu yang kita sebut specific heat capacity of water. Uh, huruf C kecil tu, specific heat capacity of water. Okay, saya tulis kat sini, specific heat capacity of water. Uh, so, you can see here, kita boleh kira menggunakan apa? Mass of water, M tu huruf kecil, uh, dia nanti tak 
jelas mass of water times specific heat capacity of water times delta T. Alright. Okay. So, you should please write the formula first. Okay. And then show the substitution where the mass of water is 446 gram. Okay. Time specific heat capacity of water. Kalau tak ingat, tengok pada table of relative atomic masses and selected constant yang kita guna masa semester 1 yang ada dekat uh, bahagian hadapan. Kita soalan tu kan. Okay. So, the value of specific heat capacity of water is 4.18. Okay. Joule. The unit is joule per gram per degree Celsius and times delta T. So, you can calculate the delta T final temperature minus initial temperature. So, 74.60 uh, minus uh, 8.50 degree Celsius. Okay. Alright. So, sambung. Okay. So, tekan calculator. You will get the heat absorbed is around 123.23 and the unit must be in kilojoule. Okay. So, actually sebenarnya kita akan dapat ini dululah. 123228. Okay, 0.9 joule. But the question ask you to give in kilojoules. Jadi wajib. Wajib beri dalam kilojoule. 1, 2, 3, 0.23 kilojoule. So this is the unit. This is the answer. Alright, so show the formula. Show the substitution. Show the final answer required. Okay. Alright, so settle with question number one. Okay, now we go to the last question for face-to-face. -face. Alright, face-to-face -face question. Kita pergi pada soalan number two. Okay, class, we have lead ataupun plumbum. Eh. Uh, simbol ini actually plumbum ni. Uh, kita sebut dia lead. Okay, a lead pellet having a mass 26.47 gram at 90, uh, sorry, 89.98 degree Celsius. And was placed in a constant pressure calorimeter of negligible capacity containing 100.0 milliliter of water. Okay. The water temperature rose from 22.5 degree Celsius to 23.17 degree Celsius. Calculate the specific heat capacity of the lead pellet. So you are going to calculate the specific heat capacity of the lead pellet. So, every object, every substance has their own specific heat capacity. Okay. So, how we are going to solve this uh, question? Ha, so, macam mana kita nak selesaikan soalan ini? So, kita kena fahamkan betul-betul konsep calorimetry ni ya. Okay. So, it is better uh, adalah sangat baik kalau kita gambarkan uh, apa yang dinyatakan dalam soalan ini dalam bentuk uh, gambar rajah lah. Uh, saya suka macam tu. Okay, so first of all, let's say initially. Initial. Okay, initial. I have, okay, I have uh, the lead, lead pellet. Uh, lead pellet. Uh, so, saya gambarkan dalam bentuk macam ni lah. Lead pellet. Eh, kepingan lead ataupun kepingan plumbum tu. Okay, so initially, the temperature was 26.4, sorry, the mass is 26.47 gram. And the initial temperature is 89.98 degree Celsius. Okay, so now saya ada satu bekas, a container, okay, saya ada satu bekas yang mengandungi apa kat sini? Saya ada toast milliliter water, eh. Okay, 100 ml water. So, kat sini saya ada 100.0 ml water. Alright. And the initial temperature of water was, okay, 22.50 degree Celsius. Ah, Mana tahu, you tengok kat sini. Because the, the mention, the water temperature rose. Suhu air itu, bila uh, asalnya 22.50 degree Celsius. Uh, sebelum lead pellet ini dimasukkan ke dalam water tu tadi. Uh, jadi kalau you nampak kat sini 100 mg water uh, ml water ini sama dengan 100 okey gram of water eh. Uh, jadi kena faham kat situ. Okey. So what happen? Dia kata dia masukkan pelajar ini masukkan lead pellet itu. 
ke dalam air yang 100 gram tu tadi ataupun 100 ml tu tadi. Uh, so this is the lead pellet. Uh, plumber ni tadi lah eh. Okay lead pellet uh, saya masukkan dalam air yang suhunya uh, apa tadi? Uh, suhu suhu air tu asalnya 22.50 degree Celsius. So what happen finally? Uh, so kita nak cari yang bahagian final So what happen? You tengok kat sini the water temperature rose from 22.5 degree Celsius menjadi okay suhu air tu sekarang jadi 23 23.17 degree Celsius. Okay ah uh, so what happen? Ah uh, you nampak kat sini Lead pellet tu, suhu dia very high. 89.98 degree Celsius. So, panas lah. Lebih higher temperature compared to water. So, bila lead pellet itu kita masukkan dalam air, what happen? Air, water will absorb the heat from the lead pellet. Ha, sebab itu, suhu air itu bertambah sedikit daripada 22.50 ke, kepada 23.17 degree Celsius. So, how we are going to answer this question? So, first of all, In order to answer the question, okay, menggunakan konsep yang betul, pelajar, pelajar wajib tulis. Okay, heat released. Okay, heat released by siapa yang release heat? Ah, Mestilah objek yang panas tu. Heat released by lead. Okay, so bila dia masuk dalam air, kita masukkan dia dalam air. The heat release will be absorbed. Okay, heat ab equals to heat absorbed. Okay, by water. Ah, okay. Jadi sekarang ni ini adalah basic principle konsep uh, calorimetry tu. Okay. Ah, so sekarang kita nak kira specific heat capacity of uh, lead pellet tu. Jadi since kita anggap okay, uh, Q water maksudnya sistem itu ada heat from water. Okay. And heat from the lead pellet itself and uh, kita assume no heat enters only from the system maksudnya kat sini zero. Uh, jadi what happen kat sini? Uh, kita boleh tulis, kita boleh tulis uh, heat released by the uh, lead pellet sama dengan okay kalau nak ikutkan kat sini saya boleh letak negatif kat sini heat released by the uh, by the lead pellet equals to heat absorbed by water. Ah, so how we are going to calculate the heat absorbed by water ni? Ah, kita boleh kira lah kan? Ah, kita pun boleh kira juga ah, perkaitan dengan heat release by lead ni sebab kita ada maklumat dia. Okay so now macam mana kita nak kira? Kita kira dulu ah, heat absorbed by water. Ah, maksudnya saya sambung kat sini. Okay Q water. Q water. Ah, so how to calculate ah, Q water? Apa yang kita ada pasal Q water? Kita ada dia punya mass. Ah, uh, Because dia punya perkaitan adalah mass of water times specific heat capacity of water times delta T. Okay. Ah, uh, So show the substitution. So you can see here the mass of water is 100 gram. Okay. 100 gram times 4.18 joule per gram per degree Celsius. Okay. Times the delta T. Delta T ni untuk siapa? Delta T tu untuk water. Sebab kita sedang kira heat absorbed by water. Ah, Apa dia? Final temperature minus initial temperature. Berapa dia punya final temperature? 23.17. Initial temperature dia 22.50. Ah, So tunjukkan ke sini. 23. 0.17 degree Celsius. Okay. Minus 22.50 degree Celsius. Okay. Kirakan. Okay. You kirakan kat sini. You akan dapat berapa. Lebih kurang. Okay. Tekan kalkulator eh. 280.06 Joule. Okay. So dengan unit lah. Kita dapat heat absorbed by water. Okay. Jadi kita nak cari specific heat capacity of lead. Okay, kalau kita lihat tadi, kita dah dapat perkaitan heat. Okay, heat release by lead equals to heat absorbed by water. Okay, yang kita dah kira apa dia? We just calculate the heat absorbed by water which is positive value 280. Okay, 280.06 joule tadi kan. Ah, Jadi kalau you tengok. Plus 
Berapakah heat release by lead? Uh, heat release by lead is negative 280.06 uh, Joule. Uh, mana dapat daripada konsep ini? Daripada konsep ini. Uh, water telah serap sebanyak 280.06 Joule apabila lead pellet yang panas tu tadi kita masukkan dalam 100 gram air. Uh, jadi negatif kat sini menunjukkan uh, lead pellet ini dia release heat. Okay, sebanyak inilah. Okay, jadinya sekarang since kita tahu bahawa kalau saya nak kira uh, heat absorb by lead itu, okay, macam mana kita nak kira? Ha, kan kalau ikutkan, kita sama dengan apa ni? Mestilah mass of lead pellet times specific heat capacity of lead pellet okay, times delta T. Ha, jadi berapakah heat release by lead pellet tu? So heat release by lead pellet is negative 280.06 Joule. Okay, equals the mass of lead pellet is 26.47 gram times we don't know the specific heat capacity of the lead pellet times delta T. Delta T kat sini merujuk kepada the temperature change for lead pellet. So initially the hmm, maksudnya sekarang kalau you tengok kat sini uh, final temperature. Uh, saya tunjuk gambar, gambar rajah ni tadi. Okay, final temperature Uh, maksudnya yang dekat sini, final temperature bagi lead ni adalah 23.17 But initially dia punya suhu adalah 89.98 degree Celsius uh, Jadi macam mana kita nak cari delta T So here is uh, 23.17 degree Celsius minus um, 89.98 degree Celsius Okay, you selesaikan, you kira kat situ, you akan dapati therefore the specific heat capacity tekan calculator. Okay, you mesti dapat positif. Specific heat capacity tak akan dapat negatif. Sebab you nampak kat sini, ini negatif. Heat release ni negatif. Nanti dekat sini, delta T pun akan dapat negatif. Ah, So, negatif dengan negatif akan cancel out. So, final answer, the specific heat capacity is 0.158. Okay. 0.158 and the unit you tengok ke sini apa yang ada joule per gram okay joule per gram per degree celsius so this is the final answer okay ah jadinya kita fahamkan konsep calorie metri ni lah alright okay so we will continue for second hour tutorial in the next video okay class thank you